and let's get into it. So nice to uh, meet you. Awards radar. My team needs all the awards. They were amazing. <laughs> so please put it on everybody's radar. We're emailing the Emmys as we speak. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> so Carmen Rose season two, the final season. What were some of the priorities you had from like a writing and show writing perspective of the stories you absolutely wanted to tell with this last season? Well, I thought I thought the season one set the table for so many brilliant and interesting places for the show to go. Where we started as a writer's room was around a central question or a controlling idea for those screenwriter nerds out there who know what I'm talking about. Um, and that was, are we defined by what we do and the way that we behave in life and the way that we treat others? Or are we defined by our DNA? You know, it's predetermined by who our parents are and where we're born. And how does one look at oneself uh, in the world? And so every one of the different characters, some of them are, are, are creatures, they're fairies or they're, or they're fawns or they're human beings. Like every one of them is grappling with that question on some level. And then they're also set in a world uh, that's rife with social injustice. And how does one deal with social injustice? Do you take up arms? Do you behave violently to push back against oppression? Or do you try to change the system from within? Do you respond with hate? Do you respond with love? You know, th there's no right or wrong answers in, in my guesstimation of, of how to, it, it depends on the scenario. And, and those are the questions that all of the creatures and humans of Carnival Row are grappling with as we launched into season two. But that is where we, where we started. And then obviously you've seen it, you know, it's a roller coaster <laughs> of unexpected twists and turns, you know, a, a lush fantasy world where you really don't know what's going to happen next. Um, but at the end of it, you realize that we've explored that central question that I just told you. Yeah. Um, and this season, you know, the kind of the background of like, you know, the 18th or 19th century Victorian imperialist colonialist like influences are already there, but it kind of escalates this season. So were there specific areas of like political and social tension research that you're doing uh, when you're converting it into this more fantastical world? Sure. Well, I'm a big history nerd, and uh, you know, I'm 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 a political wonk. I'm I, I you know, at one point I interned in the U.S. Senate. Like, I'm very interested in politics, um, mm -hmm. and the writing staff and I were interested not just in domestic U.S. kind of politics, but like what's going on around the world, the rise of totalitarianism, the 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 degradation and and backsliding of democrat uh, democratic small d democratic regimes around the world, and so. Um, you know, we were explore we were exploring like what does that mean in the different characters, but not to say that the show is overly political. That was baked into the DNA. Like the show is very much about how do these human beings love each other and deal with ordinary life under those kinds of conditions, which I'm sad to say is something that's happening in countries around the world right now whether it's here, whether it's Brazil, whether it's Ukraine, like there are a lot of people going through some of these kinds of questions. Um, and so that, that, was, uh, that was of interest to us. And given that this is the final season, uh, how do you hope like the show as like a unit will be remembered? Well, I hope that people watch all 18 episodes because season two <laughs> is 10 um, and they see that there was a progressively escalating awesomeness to it and that it got better and better and better and ended with this whoa kind of feeling that's my hope um and that everybody feels like even if you haven't seen season one yet it, you know knowing that you're in for an 18 hour ride that's going to knock your socks off th that's what i'm hoping is there any like one little thing that just didn't make it the cut for this season that you wish you could have explored oh gosh um I mean, there's there's some really great scenes um, between some really great actors that sadly we didn't have the the real estate for in the final cuts. I mean, every single one of these actors brought their A game to the show, and like I'm a, I, I love the little quiet moments between great actors, and 
it's a tonnage issue. Like I just can't like have a 27 hour show. I had to have, you know, I had to make some really sad kill your little darlings kinds of choices in the edit room. But, um, you know, th th there were some, there was some magic between uh, David and Tamsin. There was, some, you know, uh, Agreus and Imogen. There was, there was magic between uh, Orlando and a new character uh, called, um, um, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, oh my God, I'm blanking on JLE's character. I'm, I'm blanking on my own character creation. Thing. Scenes between Orlando and Jay um, and Kane. I changed his name so many times in the script. <laughs> I changed it. That's the problem. Like I have all the characters' old names still in my head because I was like, "Wait, mm. did we end up calling him this or that?" Um, um, so yeah, there there were there were scenes like that that were, were just like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> well, I got time, but it was so nice to talk to you. I'm excited for everyone to see what you guys made this season. So. Yeah, I hope everybody watches. Thank you so much, <laughs> and all you. the awards. All the we'll awards do. for for the for the crew, especially the crew. Oh, yeah. Please.